I've had uh, interesting conversations recently, and I've been kind of wondering, you know, about some of the things that people are doing with their lives and, you know, with their retirement accounts and their 401ks and their IRAs and, you know, planning for their children's college education and, you know, all that other good stuff, you know, that people do. I just had a question for you. Have you heard this song that says, All I know is I'm not home yet. This is not where I belong. Take this world and give me Jesus. This is not where I belong. I'm just wondering because, you see, I had this funny idea that I spent my whole life wasting away thinking that this isn't my home that I was going to a better place, that I was going to spend eternity with Jesus, and that because I was, I didn't want to be too attached to the things of the world, so I just got by with the little things that you know I really needed, and I didn't try to get all the luxury items that you know possibly I could accumulate in my life that I would have enjoyed, you know, having like you know jet skis and you know snowmobile trips, you know, and maybe like vacation homes in different parts of the world because. You know, I kind of thought maybe I should put that back into the ministry, you know. But I guess I screwed up because, you know, I guess I kind of missed out on what should have been my home here as opposed to being a citizen of heaven there. Because I think somehow I got it wrong and everybody else has got it right. Or do they? Good question. See, in Tozer... We don't ask ourselves what other people are doing except to compare it for ourselves. I think maybe, did I get it wrong? I mean, I would like people to come up and tell me, you know, I know prosperity people will come up and tell me that, yes, I got it wrong. God wants me to have more money than I know what to do with so that I can spend it any way I want to and, you know, just live like, you know, king of the hill. Really? I always find that interesting because I kind of look at them, you know, and I wonder, are you guys happy? You know, and I, I was listening to, you know, this one guy the other day, you know, I went to a, a smorgasbord of our all-you-can-eat place anyways. I guess they're called smorgasbords. Maybe they're not called that anymore. But it was just once a year we get, my wife and I do that, you know, we can't really afford it otherwise. So uh, we went and I was listening to this guy talk, you know, he's a pre pastor, preacher, whatever. And he was talking about, you know, money and things, you know, and it was interesting because his whole conversation was about things, things he owned, things he wanted to get, things that he had, things he was doing with them. I couldn't either hear him talk about Jesus at all. You know, I was kind of fascinated by that because it was all about what he was doing, you know, with these things. And I guess if you want to be about things, that's what you do, is you talk about things, you purchase things, you get involved in things, and you do things. I don't know. Maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I should be about things, you know. Maybe I should change my ministry to, from video, you know, sharing Jesus intimately and personally, to sharing things personally, you know, my personal things that I've accumulated and I got, you know. One of the things I found out was that, you know, I started getting all these you know, opportunities to get all this kind of material free, you know. And I kind of like enjoyed it for a while, and then I realized. The more accumulated junk that I got, the less I used them. So I realized most of the junk that I had gotten free or that somehow I got a chance to have or to own, I didn't want once I got it. So I decided at some point in time in my life to quit trying to get those things. So I quit the rat race. I quit the hamster chase. You know the hamster chase goes with the rat race. See, when I was growing up, we used to call it the rat race because you were running around the maze, you know, trying to figure out which way you're going. Well, nowadays, they know which way they're going They've got it down to a science. They get on the hamster cage, you know, and they just run in circles. Because, you know, you've seen the people, you know, they, they put on their buds, you know, in the morning. they got to go to their job. They jump on, you know, the, the treadmill at work or on the way to work, you know, and get all lathered up. And then they go take a shower, get cleaned up, and go to work, you know, and get their toys and boys and girls and happies and caves and all that kind of junk, you know. And then they have the parties and friends and neighbors and relatives and all the different things that you accumulate. And then you've got your networking, you know, and the people and the feel-good pills and the feel-good 
you know, gurus, you know, and everything else to give you, oh, by the way, we forgot to add the massage that you have to take in order to wind down from the knots that you get from all the stresses that you're doing, because after all, you know, you have to take care of that too. So you got to take your vitamins to keep up with the pills, to keep up with the sleep deprivation, to keep up with all the other things that you're doing, because you got to add that because you can't eat all the right foods when you want to at the right time, because you have to coordinate that with your dietitian and make sure that you got all your calories counted. Yeah, you know, the hamster race, you know, racing around a circle, just million miles a minute. Man, maybe I got it wrong. Maybe I'm supposed to be wound up, you know, with the new energy drinks, you know, and going after the brass ring. Well, wait a minute. It's not the brass ring, is it? It's the iPad, the new iPad, you know, the, the new, new one, the new, new, newer one, you know, the new, newest one. Or is it? You see, because the thing I find interesting is that even with technology, you know, you have to get these toys in order to play toys that look more like the original toys that they were in real life than what they are on the toys. You know, like Angry Birds, you know, or or Pong, you know what I mean? All these retro things, you know, Donkey Kong, all these things coming back. And I'm kind of laughing because I go, man, so that's reality? Cyber version, vision? You know, we got to go to 3D. You know, I've noticed that movies in 3D are the biggest rage. You know, it's kind of like, oh, let's get the real new version of 3D. You always thought, what about 7D? You know, 7D. Seven dimensional. You know, instead of three dimensional, which you guys, you know, seem to be settled for, you know, that don't want to go where I want to go, you know, not of this world, but, you know, kind of be like in God's dimension, which is there's seven dimensions, you know, beyond. There's three dimensions we know of, four that we can, you know, identify, and then there's so many more that, really, did you know that there are seven? Do you know there's more than that, but there's at least seven? Yeah, seven, really. Spiritual. Didn't know about that, did you? Gee, maybe we ought to focus in on the other dimension, you know? Instead of trying to play retro to get to three dimensions. Because we know we have a fourth dimension, that's time. Time and space, you know? So you got to step, step out of time and space in order to get to the fifth dimension, which is probably spiritual. Not sure which order they go in, but you know we could say that the fifth dimension is spiritual. So we could postulate about that, you know, get an idea and kind of go, well, what about the fifth dimension? You know, and I don't mean the song group, but I meant you know stepping into the spiritual realm. You know, well, some people do. You know, they kind of, ah, oh, so now I see. So some people do get into that. Hmm. You know, in Tozer. Because we examine ourselves, you know, I was looking at this and it says something about being a citizen of heaven, you know, being a citizen of a different dimension, being a person not of this world, being someone who really doesn't fit in. And I guess when I look at that, I kind of question myself about maybe I'm right when I look at Tozer. Maybe I don't fit into the three-dimensional world that, you know, I'm dealing with because people are thinking in one dimensional reality. You know, time on a linear basis. They're thinking that, oh, I gotta enjoy this now because I gotta live in that now, 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 you know, running in that circle, you know, that hamster cage. Instead of realizing that besides time in a linear way, there's time in a extended reality, meaning that maybe time goes on forever and ever and ever you know, more than one timeline, you know, multiple timelines, only they're all sprung out after the end of your physical life. What happens? Because most people, somewhere at some point in time, they have some kind of philosophical idea that either life ends and there's nothing else, which if you talk to them long enough, they don't believe that. Or that there's got to be something else, so they believe in something, but they don't know really what it is. But when you get into theoretical, you know, you kind of get this idea that, hey, you know what, if time was constructed, then there has to be something beyond the construct, you know, outside of time. So what if there is, outside of time, that capability of being outside of that dimension? Wouldn't it be nice to be planning for and participating in that dimensional reality that maybe is greater than the one that we're in? So you see, I think maybe people that aren't looking at the bigger picture you know, the bigger dimensions, you know, that they're only stuck in 3Ds, like getting this, that, and the other thing now. Maybe they're, like, narrow-minded, and they should be broader-minded when it comes to looking at God-minded. Because I think God's mind is bigger 
than our mind. I think his dimensional realities incorporate all dimensions of life. And I think somewhere along the line, maybe people have gotten stuck in one-dimensional or two-dimensional thinking. But just kind of like, you know, in that hamster cage and they don't realize that, hey, I could open up that cage for them and take them right out of that little wheel and they could run all over the place. Man, they could like boogie, you know? They could head for the hills. They could have like little hamster hedge holes, you know, and they could go running out into nature, you know, and enjoy themselves instead of being stuck in a cage. Because you see, a lot of what we do is like a hamster cage. We frame our life into this little box and then we put ourselves in that wheel and then we start spinning and as long as we got water and food, we think we're doing right because we got the wheel spinning. But guess what? For someone like me standing outside the cage, I'm kind of looking at that and going, you know, I don't think I want to be a hamster. I don't think I want to be a rat. I think I want to be like the Son of God. You know, I think I want to be a little different than the world. I want to be like Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but when I read Tozer, that kind of is what I think about. You know, it's like I consider these things like, man, you know, do I really want to be in that rat race? You know, do I really want to run the hamster cage? Or do I want to, if I am stuck in a cage for a short period of time, because God obviously is going to take me out of it, I know that, then do I really have to run? Maybe I could walk it. You ever think about that? What's got you running? What really is making that wheel spin? Your little leggies going as fast as they can? Or maybe you ought to slow down. Stop and take a look around. And figure out if you're caught in a cage that maybe you made. And God wants to set you free from where you're at in that hamster cage. The Christian citizen of heaven living on earth. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Daniel 12.3 Let a man become enamored of eternal wisdom and set his heart to win her and he takes on himself a full-time, all-engaging pursuit. Thereafter his whole life will be filled with seekings and findings, self-repudiations, tough disciplines, and daily dyings. As he is being crucified to the world, and the world unto him. Huh. Now, let me get this right. He wants me to crucify myself. So if I'm hanging on a cross, that means I don't have all my toys and boys and girls and and clothes and all these other, you know, like accumulated things because they've all been stripped away from me if I'm crucified to the world. I think. Is that what it makes sense to you? Is that what he's saying? The regenerated man has been inwardly separated from society as Israel was separated from Egypt at the crossing of the Red Sea. Hmm. Be ye separate. Hmm. I wonder. The Christian man is a man of heavenly, temporarily living on earth. Though in spirit divided from the race of fallen men, he must yet in the flesh live among them. In many things he is like them, but in others he differs so radically from them that they cannot but see and resent it. For the days of Cain and Abel, the man of earth has punished the man of heaven for being different. The long history of persecution and martyrdom confirms this. But we must not get the impression that the Christian life is one of continuous conflict. One unbroken, irritating struggle against the world, the flesh, and the devil, a thousand times no. The heart that learns to die with Christ soon knows the blessed experience of rising with him. And all the world's persecutions cannot still the high note of holy joy that brings up in the soul that has become the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. You know, if it isn't and it wasn't for God, really, coming and doing like Tozer just said, filling me with his spirit when I do step away from the hamster cage and the rat race and the, you know, the little wheel, you know, hamster happy trails, <laughs> you know, the little things that you look like you're in a tube, you know, and you're kind of running around, and you think you got your little world, only you didn't know that it's been designed only to go to certain little square boxes, 
And after you're in one box, go into another box, to another box, to another box. I kind of like when the Holy Spirit fills me because it's like, man, I'm set free from not just the habit trails, and the hamster trails, and the hamster wheel, and the rat race, you know, but man, I'm not in an ant farm, you know, I'm like set free to be what God wants me to be. And I know that soon I'll be leaving this behind. And you know, I like that. I like being reminded daily that this world is not my home. This is not where I belong. I don't fit the pieces of the puzzle when it comes to what the world is doing because it's passing away and the lust thereof. Everything that's in it, you know, the, the kind of lust of the eye, like, you know, political and social and, you know, getting up to, you know, being the head honcho, you know, and being macho man, you know. It's like everybody wants to be number one. And, Whatever happened to helping someone else to be number one and you be number zero? You know, the guy that just lifted them up. You know, that you stopped the race, you know. You were heading for the prize. You were going to cross the finish line and you saw your friend stumble and you go back and you help them walk across too. Because it isn't about winning, but it's about loving. Interesting, isn't it? Because we're different. We're not called to be a part of a society that keeps trying to make us numero uno, because we already know who number one is in our life. That's God. Jesus is to be the center and the focal point of our life. And if we are trying to teach ourselves sports and winning is everything, we're failing. If we're trying to teach ourselves achievement to become an American idol or singing and being the best, the all-star, you know, the number one with the best records, we're failing. Because that's not what God said. But he said, he that would be greatest among you, let him be the servant of all. He that would be your master, let him serve. He that would be great, let him be humble. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he would lift you up. The world I'm going to doesn't look anything like the one I'm living in. And the way that I'm becoming isn't anything the way the world is teaching. So I guess I have to question whether you're getting that conclusion that maybe the way people look at things is wrong, but the way God looks at things is right. And maybe we need to take a step back from our rat race, from our hobby trail with hamsters running through it, or even being caught on that little treadmill, you know, that we're just constantly running. You know, and maybe take a long, hard look at our life, you know, with God talking to us and say, is this really what you want out of life? Do you really want this customized, you know, like little hobby trail where you go from one box through your little tube to another custom box for you, you know, to another little tube to another custom box you made for yourself, you know, your man cave to your living room to your job to your home, you know, kind of like doing these little skirting throughs, you know. Every once in a while someone's got to come through and, you know, clean up the mess. Or is there more? Like Tozer is saying, is God wanting more for you than what you're doing right now? For me, I like that idea. Because if I thought this was all there is, if I thought that the way the world has been teaching me to try to get things, to do things, to be things, I'd have killed myself a long time ago because I already saw through that mess. It's like... You know, all the corporate greed and all the political greed and all the government greed and all the personal greed. And you mention anybody and they got greed, you know, because they want something for themselves, you know. It's like, man, doesn't that get old after a while? But it doesn't seem like it gets old, does it? It seems like people are losing kind of their soul, kind of like losing their tenderness, their sensitivity. They're losing that heart that they used to have. Remember how it was before? You know, you said hi to your neighbor and you cared about them. You know, if they had a barn or a house burned down, you went and helped build it back up. You know, kind of like what we do in disasters now, sort of. You know, we kind of do that. You know. But do we really pay attention to our friends and neighbors and relatives and care that much as we used to? Maybe this world is our home. And as much as it's being sent to hell, maybe we are hell bound. I hope not.
because my prayer is that you would be heaven bound and that you would find yourself not caught in the cage of your own making but that you would be set free by what Jesus has done in your life so that you don't get caught back up into the world and then participate with the world as it's heading for hell in a handbasket. I want you set free even as I want to be set free today.